Hello internet and welcome back to another video. My name is Mark. If you don't know me already, I'm double majoring in computer science and linguistics at NYU with a minor in game design. And for the past four years, the last two years, pretty much daily, I have been using an app called Todoist. I use it hourly. I have it open all day long and I use it to manage pretty much all of my projects alongside Trello and just a generic calendar. I've been a really big fan of Todoist for a while and yet I've only made like one video on it. And even then that was a live stream combining Todoist and Notion. So today I want to go over 10 features that were game changers for me in the app Todoist. Seeing as a lot of premium features recently opened up to free users, I figured it would be a perfect time. These features were either self-discovered, in other words, they weren't so secret, or they were on Todoist blogs and I was like, wait, you can do that? Either way, wanted to share them with you today. So without further ado, here are Todoist's 10 most game-changing features. Okay, so the first feature I want to go over is sub-projects. On the left here with my daily life, I have one sub-project called Reading List. And then I have independent studies and a bunch of sub-projects and similar thing for academics and there's only one thing because I don't have classes going on at this moment. Now I think sub-projects are super important because they make things look more organized and it's a great hierarchical structure for you to use. When I first discovered sub-projects, I think I accidentally click and dragged something over, so I figured I'd share it with you, but it's just super nice to be able to collapse a bunch of projects at once, but also not have to manage, you know, 20 different seemingly individual projects, and you can have things in nice categories. I'll get into some of the more technical advantages this provides, but number two on our list today is multiple task selection. So this one I found on an article about Todoist talk keys, which I'll leave a link to their blog in general down below. But here I have a bunch of video ideas, but what if I want to change a bunch of them? Maybe I want to add a label to all of them or move a lot of them. Sure, I can click on one, click on the label tag and then tag it as work, but that got kind of tedious. So instead, if you just hold down shift and then you keep clicking, you can select multiple different tasks. Uh, shift will, as in any application, you click one, it will go all the way to the bottom, so all five of these will be selected. If you hit control, you can select one by one. This isn't very surprising, but it's what you can do with this multiple select that I think is super powerful. You have a ton of options that show up at the top here, from scheduling all of them to a certain day, you can move all of them to one project at once, and for me at least, you can label them all at once. So if I wanted to label them all at work, I could do that with just this. Previously, I was literally going through and individually labeling these and I was like, why did I not think about this possibility before this? So those first two were literal features of Todoist and maybe not so secret. The third one isn't actually a feature of Todoist, not yet at least, I do hope they create something for this, but using their duplicate task feature, you can create template tasks. So I have this video task template here and all I have to do is come over here to the three dots, right click and click duplicate task. Takes no more than a second. And now I go ahead and say, oh, let's say, you know, some new to do this video. And now every time something is checked off on this new task, it's like I've created some template that I can immediately copy over and make into my own new task. I don't use this for videos anymore, but for school assignments, I used it quite heavily. If problem sets for a class every single week often had the same structure, I would say, okay, problem set number whatever, and then duplicate the task and set out the due dates there. The next feature is again, sort of a feature of Todoist, but that is integrations. If you've never used integrations before, pretty much it's this third party software, Zapier, IFTTTT, Automate.io, there's a whole bunch of them where you can have one software interact with another software, even though they can't directly talk to each other. And I think knowing that Todoist supports these kinds of things is super cool. So this is Automate.io. Now, none of these companies, you know, not Todoist, not Zapier, not Automate.io are sponsoring or affiliated with me in any way. But this one I think is very, very simple. If I go to my current bots, I have something called Cowdino Vid Recorded. Whenever I go to my Trello board, if I ever make a video here, so let's go ahead and create a card from this template. Let's just call it new video, very straightforward. New video, whatever. As soon as I take this card and I move it over to the underway column, if I go ahead and look at my Todoist projects, go to Catano Arcade, in just a moment, we'll see new video pop up here in no section. Now this is where I'll organize it to upcoming videos or something similar. However, using features like automate.io, which are pretty free unless you're doing an absurd amount of automation, can be super helpful for your general workflow. And if you've been looking for an app, but you don't want to stray too far from what you're used to, Todoist has so many integrations that you can work with. Anyway, back to just Todoist. Tip number five is going to be filter tip number one, and that is filtering by sub project. Now, this is something I came across in a Todoist article 
kind of randomly, but a while ago for all of my academics, if I go to archived projects, I'm gonna go ahead and bring cognition back and we'll bring operating systems back, bring these into academics. This will be important in just a moment. Now, suppose I have a homework assignment to fill out homework for cognition. And for a while, I would take these, give it a label of something I've deleted since, but let's just call it work for now. I had a label for schoolwork and you'll see why it's gone in just a second. And then we'll say OS assignment and we'll go ahead and we'll tag this with work again. So now that I have these two labels, I can then set up a new filter to show me all tasks with this label, show all work. And the filter query will be at work, at work and seven days. And that shows me all the things tagged with work that are coming up in the next seven days. But if I forgot something, kind of a problem. The thing that I stumbled across was instead of having to tag every class that I had with the schoolwork tag, what I can do is if I go ahead and edit this filter. Now let's say I want to show everything in the academics tab. If I go pound academics, I have to go pound. I have to go say backpack space. I, can, I put emojis, which I'll talk about in a minute, but this will show me everything in the academics project. But you can see that it doesn't show me everything in the sub projects of academics. So to do that, I hit edit filter and I just add a second hashtag here. And all of a sudden it'll show me everything in ongoing assignments for operating systems and all my tutoring stuff, anything and the last assignment that I have down here for cognition. So whenever I have classwork, all I have to do is double pound sign academics and then seven days, as opposed to having a label that I need to remember to tag everything with. Nice, cool secret to use for filter queries. Still on the note of filters, tip number six is filter tip number two, and that is order of operations in filters. So a very simple filter, if I go ahead and look at my dailies tag, it's all the things that are tagged with at dailies, which repeat every single day and are happening today. So anything that is a daily activity that I still have to do today will show up in this filter. That's pretty simple. Something a bit more convoluted is this tasks for hobby projects. Instead of creating one label to then put on every single project, I have anything tagged with at hobbies using the vertical bar for or as one might in programming or anything that's in the seashell project. I can't say and because that will look for both of them. So if I actually did change this to and, we might see a whole bunch of stuff disappear as we do there. So let's change that back to or. So in hobbies or seashell or, and then here is where the tip comes in. You can use your parentheses to change the order of operations for Todoist or at least focus things in. It's kind of a logic thing, but all in all, I'm saying look for anything tagged with hobbies, anything tagged from the seashell project, anything that is from the lifestyle NYU channel and within the next seven days, and then anything with the cat on arcade and within the next seven days. Without these parentheses, these two seven days would be doing the same exact thing. Sort of. Again, it gets kind of specific with logic, but when you're working with filter queries, you can use parentheses and ampersands and or signs. So keep that in mind because you can get really specific with these filter queries and you can do a lot with them. Anyway, tip number eight is an aesthetic thing and not really a Todoist feature, but they do have support for it. And that is the use of emojis. Now you'll see that I use emojis everywhere on my Todoist. I do the same thing on my calendar. In fact, it just makes things look a little more colorful, a little more exciting. And if I ever put something in my calendar for a class, let's say cognition and in my Todoist for let's say cognition, if I put a little brain emoji, it creates a little mental link. If I do a little pencil emoji and I choose the one with paper, I do write out script then I just kind of, I don't know. To me, I love it. Maybe I go a little over the top. I could definitely use less varying emojis, I should say, but yeah, keep it in mind. If you're on Windows and you hold down the Windows key and hit the period key, you can get a whole window of emojis that shows up and it makes this really easy to do. If I ever respond with emojis in the YouTube comments, this is how I do it because I'm not texting on my phone when I'm responding to YouTube comments, I'm actually typing on my computer. The penultimate tip in this video, number nine, is the incompletable task feature that Todoist has fairly recently released. If you go to something like a board view, for example, my lifestyle channel is on the board view, then over here on the top left, you see anchor up Mondays and Thursdays. This means that it's not a task I'm really completing. It's just a reminder that's over here that I should be uploading every Monday and every Thursday. You can make a task incompletable by putting a little star here and then a space. And when you save it, you can't check that task off. For my classes, what I would do is up here in the syllabus section, this is an incompletable task. And on the comments, I've just attached my syllabus. 
The final task is Markdown support. Now this is me mostly being a very, very big fan of Markdown. And if you don't know what it is, it's effectively a way to type things out very quickly and format them very quickly. Now what's so important about this is that you can full on write very clear comments on to-do's cards using Markdown. Now it doesn't support every single part of Markdown, but suppose I go over to language log number two, I have all of my tasks listed out here. I go to comments and I say, okay, script. Um, this is going to be the script for the video. You can look up Markdown syntax wherever you want, but two is, you know, header two. This is a slightly smaller header and I go ahead and control enter and you can see the Markdown formats automatically within Doist. If you're a programmer, you can say um, programming concepts. We'll go Java, um, public static void main string args. If you're familiar with Java, you know this. And we can go ahead and see that it's automatically a little code block. If I want videos themselves to be bold, I can surround it into asterisk. And this way I know, hey, this should grab my attention. Japanese learning logs, I do it right here. It's bold at the start and italics on the end. Similar to emojis, it gives you a lot more aesthetic freedom and sometimes aesthetics can be a very big thing about a program you use every day, or at least very frequently. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize if I spoke too fast throughout this video. It's something I'm constantly working on as I make videos. I just get a lot of comments about it, but I promise you I am working on it. But anyway, if you got something out of this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Is there a tip that you use all the time that you think I should know about? Because I'd love to know more about Todoist if there are things I don't already know. Is there something on here that you're curious about how I've set up? Is there something here that I just kind of haphazardly mentioned and you're like, Wait, how'd you do that? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to make more Todoist videos. Thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.